Hi, y'all. So this is a little different. Rather than writing something for packet pushers, I am going to record a few things. And ironically, I'm going to start with a topic about writing and building presentations. So I'm going to talk through various parts and ideas behind communicating effectively. And these are going to be technical examples. They will sometimes apply to all kinds of writing and communicating, but I'm going to use technical examples and I'm going to stick to what they think makes an, an engineer effective at communicating. Now, for this very first lesson, I want to start out with something a little bit different and a little bit, I hope, very simple, which is to eschew obfuscation. What do I mean by this? Well, it was actually a sign on my manager's desk when I was very young and I was working at a company and I wondered about what this meant. So I went and did some research and discovered the meaning of the words. And of course, askew means avoid. Don't do this. Obfuscation means to make it complex. So the whole point of this lesson is to say, stop making your communication complex. We're going to use writing as our skill for this one, but this applies to presentations. This applies to all sorts of things. So let's start and think about this. First of all, what is my goal in communicating? We often think in terms of you know, all sorts of things about, oh, making it pretty or doing this or doing that or blah, blah, blah. But the main thing we need to care about is what am I trying to accomplish with this communication? What information am I trying to do? Am I trying to just get attention? I just want to be in front of the crowd. Do I want to prove a point? Do I want to prove how smart I am or how whatever it is, how much training I have? Am I trying to persuade someone to do something? Or am I trying to just transfer information to someone who needs to know? The key is I want to get the point across. I want to decide what it is I want to say. And I want to get the point across as clearly and as quickly as possible. These are my goals. Not to entertain other than to hold the reader's attention or the listener's attention. Yeah, you can do some entertainment just to get people's attention and hold it, tell jokes, stuff like that. Not for bragging, not even for humble bragging, just to communicate and get a point across. Let's talk about simplifying things by starting with this really long sentence we have here. Okay? Now, this is the forwarding engine or FE is programmed by the system designers and installed in routers by the equipment manufacturer, unlike the FE that is installed in a switch so that it will move the physical data link and data layer headers like the Ethernet header, leaving the IP header, transport headers such as the TCP or UDP header, and any application headers such as the HTTP header. Now, this sentence does actually say something. It's long. It's complex. So the first thing we want to do is we want to strip out information we don't need, things we don't need to say, information that doesn't need to be there. I'm going to start with what are called articles. Now, articles are things like this and that are my primary two articles. Um, so these are the things that I'm concerned about. Most of the time when I'm writing, a very easy way for me to strip out a lot of stuff is to get rid of this and that. These two articles are, they're trying to say a specific thing matters, but most of the time you don't need them. So for instance, we can look that. Unlike the FE that is installed, we don't even need that in this sentence. Unlike the FE installed in a switch, so we get rid of that, that it will remove the physical and data layer headers like the Ethernet header, leaving the IP header, etc., etc. So we can get rid of these that's. 
This is actually the beginning. Now, remember, sometimes you can get rid of articles by rewriting the sentence. You don't need to just remove the article. You need to remove the articles, and you sometimes need to rewrite the sentence. In this particular case, I've had to remove that is, not just that. So the th second thing I want to look for is always going to be of or subordinate phrases, prepositional or subordinate phrases. For instance, and installed in routers by the equipment manufacturer. Is this getting me any additional information? Not really. It is just adding words. Again, if I look unlike the FE, that is installed in a switch. I've already said it. It's in a router, or you should always assume that it's in a router. I could actually replace system with router if I want to. And this whole section just doesn't need to be here. So I can strip out all of these prepositional phrases or subordinate phrases and make the sentence shorter. Again, my goal is not just to make the sentence shorter. It's to communicate more quickly, more clearly, and more effectively. Continuing with this sentence and stripping out everything we've already said, we go down here to these, uh, these parenthetical phrases. Are these actually really needed? Such as the TCP or, or UDP header. Well, these are transport headers. So these are repetition. This is just a bit of repetition. I don't need this stuff in here. Such as the HTTP header. This is an application header. I can strip these parenthetical phrases out. So the first thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for articles. The second thing I'm going to look for is subordinate phrases. Then I'm going to look for parentheticals. Now, these are three things that are very easy, low-hanging fruit, that are very just come stripped right out. And most of the time, you just don't lose any information. Now, if you really wanted to leave this information in, but you wanted the simpler structure of the sentence, you can always put a star or a footnote down here and say, such as the HTTP header and a footnote of some type. So there is possible, there are possible ways of getting to where you reduce the information while leaving the information in overall. And people who are interested can go read the footnotes. People who aren't can skip the footnotes and go on. So always think not just of how to shorten the sentence and how to make it clearer, but how to relocate information someplace other than in the main text. When I'm writing books in particular, I do sidebars and notes a lot. Why? Because I want that information in the text, but I don't want it in the primary, re in the path of the reader. The reader needs a straight shot to get through the text. It needs to flow, and all the extraneous information can be put someplace else. So I've looked at my articles, I've looked at my subordinate and prepositional phrases, I've looked at a couple of other things, I've looked at my parenthetical phrases. Now the next thing I want to look for is I want to look for specifics that aren't needed. Do I actually need this specific information? For instance, in this particular case, I can say, um, well, what if my underlying physical layer is not Ethernet. Now, I don't, I've already pulled it out of this sentence, but in an earlier version, I probably had something about the type of physical layer. You don't need the type of physical layer. You can just say physical layer. Now, you could actually say in data link here. That's fine, but you actually don't need any extraneous information about these things. Now, you can actually replace the physical and data layer headers with lower layers. So sometimes it's okay to replace something with a little bit less specific information in it because really the reader doesn't need to know this or they should already know it. There's no particular reason to tell your readers. In this case, you're talking to an audience that knows what a forwarding engine is. They probably know what the lower layers mean. So there's some point where you can start stripping out information that's just not too specific. It's not necessary. 
Once again, let's return to articles because I see that I have a that in this sentence. Do I need this phrase in here? No, this whole so that it can be replaced with two. So that it will can all be replaced with two. The forwarding engine FE is programmable by the system designers to remove the lower layer headers. So I can actually strip down this article that I didn't strip in the first place, or I did strip in the first place, but I didn't take out in the slide set. So I can get rid of yet another little bit of this. One thing you are going to hear about clear writing a lot is always use the active voice. I am not fond of singular rules that are applied all the time. Sometimes you need articles. You should strip them out when you can, but sometimes they're necessary. Sometimes you need subordinate phrases. You can strip them out when you can. You can put them in footnotes, other things like that we've already talked about. Active voice is one of those cases. I hear a lot about how you should always use active voice. I will just say that in my reading, because I read a lot, I read 30 or 40 books a year, I find it much easier to read books with mixed active and passive voice rather than always active voice. Some sentences just don't work in active voice. They need to be passive. Sometimes you need a third person subject or a second person subject rather than a first person subject. So thinking about active voice is always really important, but don't just say convert everything to active voice. Yeah, I know that's what your AI grammar system is going to tell you, blah, 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 blah. But you should really pay attention and try to be judicious in your use of active voice and switch back and forth as much as you can to give your reader variety. Use it where it makes sense. Use it when it does or don't use it when it doesn't make sense. Here, I do not have active voice. I have the forwarding engine. This is a second party subject. The object is actually down here, the system designers. So my active part party is the system designers and they are acting on the forwarding engine. So I have my, my, my subject, my object and my verb reversed for active voice. I can convert this to an active voice. I can also strip out program by the system designers because I don't need to know who designs this. Again, this is just extra information. So here is my original sentence. The forwarding engine is programmed by the system designers and installed in routers by equipment manufacturer, unlike the, F the FE that is installed in a switch, so that it will remove physical and data link their headers like the Ethernet header, leaving the IP header, transport header, such as the TCP or UDP header, and the application headers, such as HTTP header. And the forwarding engine removes the lower layer headers. It says the same thing. I've taken out all the articles. I've taken out all the subordinate phrases. I've taken out all the parenthetical phrases. I've taken out, I've made it into an actual active, an active voice sentence. This is a much cleaner sentence. And it says the same thing, but a lot shorter. It's getting the point across. So remember those rules of thumb when you're writing. Another point that you will often hear is use plain language. Now, I'm going to have, a, we need to talk a little bit about what plain language means. Plain language usually means I don't use technical language. So what does technical language mean? Technical language means a piece, a word, or a phrase, or something like this that is specific to a particular field. It's not so much that you don't use the word in some other field, like routing, switching, aggregation or aggregate or summarize. We use those words in other places than computer networking, but they have very specific meanings in computer networking. Therefore, they're called technical language. Routing should mean something different than switching. Aggregation should mean something different than summarization. So technical language has a positive aspect in that it gets me to my goal of saying what I want to say faster. It's a shorthand. It's a very specific known meaning. 
On the other hand, I want to use plain language or simple language as much as possible. Smaller numbers of syllables, simpler words, the word that fits, things like this. So do use plain language. But again, like with active and passive voice, balance is a key. You need to use technical language when it's needed and use plain language when that's better. Now, another thing I will say is do not replace facts with feelings. If you've ever read the book, The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis, he has a thing in there that he's going against called the Green Book. It's a, it's a book of grammar. And they say the waterfall is sublime and they tear this sentence apart and they say it's about the emotions of the person looking at the waterfall. Don't ever do this. Don't replace facts with feelings. It doesn't matter how you feel. What you want to do is you want to give the facts. So these are my basic rules for thinking about how to write or how to communicate more clearly. Make sure you get rid of articles, get rid of subordinate phrases, get rid of parentheticals to shorten things up, use a good mixture of active and passive voice, use, a, use technical language when it's clarifying, use plain language when you can. All of these things are trade-offs and they're all important, not only in writing, but even in presentations. Now we'll focus on presentations in future lessons a little more carefully, but I'm thinking about writing at the moment and how you write more effectively.